Welcome to Inside the Soundwave Internet TV Show, live from the beaches of Indian Atlantic, Florida, where all of your local musicians get to tell their music story from the beginning to the present. And now, here's your host, Mr. Soundwave. Hey, welcome. Right. Yes. Inside the Soundwave in the Atlantic, Florida. Show number 38. And I think Jack was on show number four or five. Someone's in there. I was right Mr. there. Jack Starr tonight. Thanks, Jack, for Thank coming you, back. Thank you, Will, for having me. It's great Appreciate to have it. Jack back. Uh, Jack's back. <laughs> Jack's never left. I mean, he lives right, well, he lives close by. Pretty close by. Yes, we're on the beaches of Indy Atlantic, Florida, uh, which was a nice, scorching, boiling hot day today. Uh, you can stand outside and, and be in the shower. I know. We had like a weather event. It was like 94 degrees. <laughs> it was hot as hell. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we have one of the hottest guitar players in Brevard and, and worldwide right here with Jack Starr. Um, world known. Um, if you look at the poster for the Inside the Soundwave show, you'll see Jack up in the corner there. He's been an icon with, with the show for quite a while, nine months. And yeah. uh, we're pleased to have him back tonight. He's going to show you some guitar stuff tonight. I would love to, yeah. And, and we're not going to do any of the... Uh, uh, when did you pick up a guitar, Jack? And no, none of that stuff. We're not going to do it. You can watch the first show that he was on back, I think, in October. All right. So uh, we're going get to get on with the show tonight. Uh, Nothing about like when I came to Earth and my father wrapped me up in a blanket and put me in a space pod and you know, and I landed you know none of that stuff. No, I get you'll have to watch <laughs> the first show because we were sticking guitars under the bed. I, and, yeah, I was and doing so, all that stuff. All that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I've mellowed out since. <laughs> Jack's been pretty active here in Brevard County down in here in Florida, uh, uh, one the paradise on the beach. Yes, uh, he's been popping up uh, at a lot of the places uh, of doing guitar work and, and yeah. a lot of the jams, huh? Uh, well, open mics and jams. Open mics, jams, uh, the whole nine yards. And it, there's a really great scene out here, as you know, and as it's you're great. helping create. Uh, and um, it's just really great how all the musicians out here stick together and how they are all supportive of each other. Right. I mean, it's just wonderful. You know, I've gone into a lot of clubs and been welcomed, hey, come on up on stage, do a couple of songs, you know, and, and so it's always a great feeling, and let me plug a couple of the people, like uh, Dave Curry at Blues Blues, great guy. Uh, right down the road. John Quinn Living over at uh, Squid Lips, uh, the guys from uh, Winfields, uh, yep. the guys... Right down the road. Down the road again. <laughs> uh, of course, Charles and Lisa Knight, and uh, I was going to their Cheers to You for a while, and you know all the people and of course there's just some like great musicians you know like some bands that i really enjoy hearing like luna pearl like zen 4.0 who like uh, zen, oh, i think zen, zen point four oh. yeah yeah, yeah zen 4.0 great um, band and uh sound man surge is ISW. fantastic uh, guitar player and uh, Thanks, brother. surge and, uh, you know love you too brother and uh it, it's just it's been just a great warm supportive scene out here and it's really cool. Instead of you know everybody you know kind of being competitive, and right. it's not like that at all. So no, because we have a large group of good musicians here in Bavard. Yes, we do. Um, we really do. Some of them uh, come out, and some of them hide. And some of them hide, right? <laughs> well, you know, we, we do. We do what we can. <laughs> They're here in Bavard County, and and. It's amazing when you, if you go out at night, you, you never know who you're going to bump into. You really don't. And, you know, there's really some great, talented guys out here. I mean, I like uh, Guitar Steve a lot. I think <laughs> yeah, he's, I forgot the name of his band. Uh, what was the name of his band? G.S. Teaser. G.S. Teaser. I like him a lot. Uh, of course, Dave Curry and John Quinn Livin. And, uh, John's playing with who? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think uh, uh, it's band. just John Q and the Heartbreakers. Something like that. And uh, there's a lot of great guys out here, and uh, so it's a cool scene, you know. Uh -huh. Open mic. Uh, open mic, yes. Right down the road uh, at Luz. Uh, yeah. I think there's open mics. Uh, almost all the places have an open mic. Uh, you can catch one like any night of the week, literally. I mean, if you're right. into that, you know. Yeah, they're always going on, and there's always good, a good band hosting, and then the people just come up and jam. 
they just jam away. Yeah. We went to one at Kenny D's. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Kenny D's. That's right. That would be Bruce Marion, I think. Bruce Marion. We, Bruce fi- Marion. we went to one of his, and we, we, uh, the band I play in sat in and did a set. With great. Well, uh, Bruce is a great guy, great too. Guy. Well, Bruce is a great guy. Great guy. And, uh, a great guy. Let, let's plug everyone today, okay? Hey, no, let's... We'll, we'll plug Howie's Guitar Store. Uh, wait, wait. What's, what is it called again? Guitar Haven. We'll plug Marion Music. Who else can we plug? Mike Della Chapa, Florida yeah. Discount Music, one of, one of my friends. Right. And I won't even, I won't even plug myself. I won't even mention any no, of my albums. No, this is, this is no, I'm not right. going to mention any of my albums. I'm just going right, to... We, we're, off, we're, we're off this up. Okay. Joe Perry had an album called Let the Music Do the Talking. It was a long time ago. And I always thought it was oh, yeah. a really cool name for an album. Let the Music Do the Talking. And you... Were in, didn't you go to Europe? I did. About uh, two months ago, we, we took our, our heavy metal band, which is called Burning Star. There you go. And uh, we went and played in Germany and played some other places, and uh, it was great. It was like, it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird because you go over there and you're playing in front of huge crowds, and you come back here, and of course, it's not going to be as huge because right. it's a different kind of music that's popular in America. Yeah, Europe is so different. Europe, and, and I love the fact that they love metal and they love hard rock. And uh, in America, it's, it's a little bit more polarized, you know. You have the hip-hop, the rap, uh, you have uh, all kinds of music. Yeah. <laughs> so In Europe, you have a concert and there's 150,000 people there. Sometimes, yeah. 50, massive crowd. Every time I see Palladia, I see the band is playing. Oh, unbelievable. And, you know, they South America. Here. No. South America, too, is a huge market. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah that's huge right. Huge market, know. yeah. I think Iron Maiden played uh, yeah. Rock in Rio. Oh, my God. It was like 150,000 people. Unbelievable. It's, it's good. Yeah, I it haven't is. played to that yet. But uh, to a lot, but not Iron Maiden size. I, be, I would bet you they'd love you in South America. I think it's going to happen. I, I do. really do. Thank you for saying that because uh, uh, bueno, como estas uh, todos uh, los. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't speak Spanish. No. How do you say hello in Spanish? Uh, um, o- hola, mi amigos. <laughs> Buenos dias. <laughs> Buenos dias. Okay. Anyway. Buenos dias. Anyway, was I here to do music at all? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do the show a little different tonight. Like okay. I said, we're not gonna go through the history of Jack. You can mm. watch that in the first show. Show. I don't um, even want to know about Jack Star anymore. I'm I'm done <laughs> with him. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we, you're tagged. You're tagged. Know. We all know who you are. We all know that you're a great guitarist. We were listening to some of your uh, videos earlier, and it's incredible, Jack. It's so smooth. Uh, you're natural. Nice, Definitely right. a natural. You think you were a guitar is part of your arm and body. <laughs> At this point, it is. Yeah. yeah. It didn't used to be, but I think I can <laughs> safely say that oh, yeah, I'm definitely. comfortable with it. You know. And you, you, you really, uh, you've really you come a long way here in, in Brevard. I mean, you were quiet at first, but now everybody knows you, and they're all, they, all love you. they all love you, your guitar playing, and you. Almost every... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I don't really mean it. Uh, so many people have come... Come forward well, that's and, cool. and said, you know, why we sell Jack and Craig? And you know, it is. I think that they sense that I'm supportive of them, and and it's like they're we're we're exchanging the love, and that's a good thing. Yeah, that's great. It's because no one's you know on an ego trip at all that I've met. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's very cool about it, and um, we're making music, and hopefully, through the music, we we make people feel good, and we. Uh, bring them closer to some kind of spiritual truth and, and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You mean you go from guitar shredder mm-hmm. and you go to blues? I think they're very uh, inter- intertwined and uh, I think uh, rock comes from blues. In fact, most American contemporary music comes from blues. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that said, rock comes from blues, metal comes from rock, so there's a connection you know, to the whole thing. And my favorite metal guys have some blues in them, which would be like Zach Wilde from Ozzy's band, Yo, um, yeah. Gary Moore, who kind of plays blues and, and rock and started off playing metal. Eric Clapton, who also started off playing metal. I mean, it's hard to believe that, but if you look at old pictures of Eric, you'll see he's playing three Marshall stacks. 
uh, you know, he's definitely in a metal right. mode, you know. Right. Not, not the Yardbirds. And the Yardbirds were metal. They were mm -hmm. like a seminal uh, kind of metal band, sure. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, I, you said something about blues. Are you going to... I would love to do something. See, this is what you got to watch, folks. I mean, during the show tonight, he's going to pick up this famous guitar of his. I, I would just love to play a little bit, you know. Like, the um, thing is, like, I don't mind playing live. I'll just. Just like we had a little riff, you know. That, that was, was it. That was. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> that was it. Maybe. You, do you want to play uh, one of your... I'd like to do like a little bit of a, of a little blues thing that I have. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just playing around. Dex just playing but around. That's just like the ripping style that I do. I also do a thing that's kind of interesting. I do I use the volume knob and it's called volume swells. And what I do with it is I actually try to make it sound like a violin, like sound like a different thing, you know. <laughs> and then, okay, now. I remember one. when you did that in the studio upstairs. You freaked my engineer right <laughs> out, man. Well, you know what it is? It's <laughs> like you can use it for blues. You can do like... <laughs> or you can tap the notes out like this. Now, that's a different technique. Now, Van Halen did this thing. He did this. And everybody knows that, but what I do that's slightly different is I, I just hit the notes 12 frets apart, like... I mean, that's another technique that I do. And then uh, some of the other techniques is just basically uh, doing like two notes at once, like this. on through the whole show or keep it close by yeah, man. and you're going to see a lot of good guitar stuff mr jack star is here tonight in house don't go away watch the video it's a jack star video hang out cool.
Thank you. We have one star. We have one more song for you. This one's called Evil Never Sleeps.
go, man. Yeah, we're back. That was a little. Now we're out. Yeah, we're back. That's a little riff. But, you know, like I was, like I was saying before, you know, I, I like to try experiment with different techniques and not just stick to the standard blues stuff. So, like, sometimes if I'm doing a blues, I'll start doing stuff like... <laughs> As opposed to just go, oh, so I go, so I'll just tap it out or just do something a little bit unusual, you know. Wow. Jeez. Interesting, Jack. Yeah. Try to keep it that way a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got that, of course, you've got that figured out to a science anyway. Yeah, a lot of that stuff I've been working on for a long time, you know, and, and uh, you know, just like chord things, like instead of just going like this, I might just add a few more chords, like. A couple of chords to it, you know. They're getting a good shot of your guitar when you. When this you guitar play. is very photogenic, you know. Uh, it really yeah. is. And I want to just show something because this is kind of a little bit weird. I took an amplifier logo. This is this is from a Fender amplifier. I think a, maybe a dual reverb or deluxe reverb. And I actually uh, screwed it into the finish of the guitar, which destroyed any value the guitar might have. But it doesn't really matter, does it? Because I think it looks cool. That is your and I've never seen another guitar player do that. I have That's not cool. seen that. So now I'm hoping that there will be people out there that will say, you know, that's a cool thing, and they'll start doing it. And when then, did you do that? I only did that a couple of months ago. I was just, I saw the thing lying around Guitar Haven, and I said to Howie, do you mind if I have this little thing? <laughs> and Howie goes, what do you want to do with it? And I said, I want to stick it on the finish of the guitar. So I did that. It, it really looks good, though, because it shows up real good. I think it shows up really cool, and, um, and I like it. So it's all good. <laughs> it's all good in the hood. It's great. Did you want to talk about... Um, um, Gary Moore? Yeah. Well, we had mentioned, you know, um, in, during the break, we had talked about Gary. And I felt, that, I felt the kinship to Gary Moore simply because uh, he does a lot of... Well, he did past tense. He did a lot of metal, he did a lot of rock, and he did a lot of blues. And that's how I feel. And uh, everything he did had the same amount of passion and uh, fire. He's just a very fiery player. I think there's some great players, but they're not necessarily fiery players. Right. And uh, I try to be more passionate when I, you know, I'll rip into a note like <laughs> You know, just, just ripping. As opposed to just going, you know. You know. So I try to, like, do both. I try to, like, get the, you know, the tasty stuff. And then try to get the. <laughs> try to do both, you know. <laughs> and that's, to me, Gary Moore did that. Right. And uh, I, I, for once, was, was, I was kind of sad, you know, when I heard that he died. He, you know, we were about, we're about the same age and uh, kind of have some of the same background and. Uh, so I even did a song, and it's on YouTube called uh, Blues for Gary. So you guys might want to check that out. It's on you, YouTube? It's on YouTube, yep. Blues for Gary. By Jack Star? By Jack Star, yep. Okay. So they can find it just by uh -huh. the ty uh, typing that in. And maybe I, could do a, uh, maybe I could do one of his songs uh, yeah. right here live. I mean, I'm going to do it to a backing track. 
Even though there is a drummer back there, but he's very invisible, Will. He's there, right? It he's kind there. Of, kind of like in spirit. He's there, but this, this shield blocks him. Kind of I think that's what it is. Kind of I think, but I think he's there. Let me make sure this is out of your way. Yeah, so I think we're going to do um, something, uh, some Gary Moore song. I forgot the name of it, but wait a minute. What is the name of it? Blues. Oh. What's the name of it, Serge? Quick. Uh, the name of it. Quick, it, quick, come on. The name of it is. Uh, the name of it is. Still got the blues. Okay, we got it. Uh, still got the blues. Still got the blues. Still got the blues. We still got the blues. Go, man. Okay, so, what's so it's low reloading again. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey. Okay. okay. I'm just really happy to be able to uh, do some stuff live because I think a, a lot of times in our day and age we we really miss a lot of the live stuff. 
yeah. especially on television. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, we had a lot of live variety shows, and people would get up and play whatever it was, accordion even, but it, it was live. Live. And so I think that nurtures the, uh, the desire to, to play good, to play live, you know. Right. There's no auto-tuning back then. You know? <laughs> no auto-tuning, no multiple overdubs, no, you know, you get 25 takes to do it. You had to just do it if you were on the Ed Sullivan Show or the Smothers Brothers or whatever show was out back then. Right. They had to do it. So if Hendrix went on or The Who went on, and I remember like, you know, being like 12 years old and watching The Who smashing their instruments on the Smothers Brothers show. And it was great. You know, it was live. Like, it was live, yeah. Sure. It's like, I want to do that. Well, it's, it's really good because uh, you get to strut your stuff and, mm. and, and you, you're, you know, it's not recorded. Everything is recorded and it's dubbed and cut and edited and pasted and, and you know, that, which is... Exactly. Which we call Pro Tools. Pro Tools. You know, it's funny because <laughs> I was just talking about like Santana the other day too. Like, I also love Carlos Santana very, very much. I've been following him, you know, since, since I started playing guitar. And, um, I mean, he was a really interesting character. I mean, he grew up in Mexico. He was a street kid living in Mexico City. Then he came to America. And then the family moved to uh, Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, he started, he, you know, I think he joined uh, Journey or something. He was in Journey or Neil Schoen and so on and so forth. But anyway, I would love to do something by Carlos if we could do that, too. Oh, yeah. I'll just go down all my influences. We did Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Love Gary Moore. Love Carlos Santana. And maybe we could do uh, one of his tunes. Could we? Sure thing, right? You want to okay. go for it? Let's do it. This one is, um, I don't know the name of it. Nice crowd here. I am sitting here, and it sh should be, it should be a Letterman sitting here. Ah, man. Yeah, man, or Leno. You know, this is great having him right here at the. And, and Leno would loan me one of his cars too. You know, from, <laughs> from there's like 300 car cars. Cars that he's got yeah. going on. Yeah. Leno, yeah. I'm talking to you, Jay. Watch this show. Yeah. And give us a call. We're gonna send you a copy. That's right. Okay. You need to get Jack on the show. 
tremendous. I'm lucky enough to have him back a second time. Lucky enough. Of course, he lives a couple streets away from me, but it's great. It's great. Fortunate. Paradise. It's, it's the best. We're going to take one more quick, short break. You can't go away. Another Jack Star video coming up your can, way. Can I give you exit music? We're going to get some exit music. Don't Here don't it cut it off too sh- quick, sh- uh, team. Calling, yeah. calling the aliens. Calling the aliens. <laughs> All right, don't go away. Welcome to the land of the dead. We hope your stay here will be most enjoyable. Yeah. 
Jack Star on the show, segment number three tonight. Show number 38, on the beach, with the famous guitar shredder. And blues, I mean, you do all, you, you, I, you, I no, love, you've got I love quite blues. a variety. Yeah, I love blues, I love country, I love Latin, jazz, so just about everything. You just know? about it. If it's, just, if it's played from the heart, then I'm gonna dig it. Well, back in the 80s, did you, did you pretty much were just in the metal? I was just into metal in the 80s. Um, and, you, and when you went over to Europe not too long, oh, just not too long ago, you played, uh, you played they, metal. They want to hear metal over there. <laughs> Loud, angry, but melodic <laughs> metal. Melodic. You know, kind of like a old school metal, like, which is what we do. We do like old school, like kind of like Deep Purple, Zeppelin, um, Iron Maiden, that kind of stuff, you know. Uh -huh. You don't mind me asking the band members' names, do you? No. Is it that okay or Let's no? give them a plug. No, of course it's okay. Yeah. We've got Todd Michael Hall, lead vocals. He's from Michigan. We've got Ned Maloney on bass. He's from Palm Bay. But let's not hold that against him. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ned's a good guy. Yep. And on drums, we have a very famous drummer. I think you're going to have him on by himself, Rhino. Oh, yeah, Rhino. Right. Rhino. Well, he's been on the past couple of weeks with yeah. Steve. Right, yeah. On Skype. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. we've got Rhino, wow. and, uh, and it's really cool. It's, uh, that's who we went over with two months ago. And that's it was, a good group. It really hey, is. And the, you. Yeah, I mean, the, come on. The band sounds good, you know, it really does. And uh, everybody can sing in the band, I'm, you know, except really me. I can't sing metal. Metal, you have to have a very high, high voice. Right. You know? But they can all sing, you know, the four octave screaming metal. So that's good too. You and you're playing with that tremendous guitar of yours. 
Yeah. I, I try. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do all my little metal tricks, you know, like stuff like this. Okay, that's enough for metal. No more metal. I mean, there's no more metal on this show, but. Wow. But I, but I, you know, and my other metal riff is. Okay, I'm not doing it anymore. That's, That's it. it. Okay. okay. Now let's let's get back to. Let's get back get back to where we were here. So anyway, um, I was talking about like, you know, I started off actually when I really first started. I listened to blues. Uh, this was like a really long time ago, and I listened to the Three Kings. kings right. Now, the Three Kings would be Freddie King, Albert King, and BB King. And by some weird coincidence, my last name was King. And uh, I just uh, tuned into those three guys because they all played great guitar. Right. And um, I still do. It's like 40 years later, and I still listen to those guys. So I like oh, to. Yeah, a lot of people listen. Sure. Yeah. Well, Clapton listened to them, you know. I mean, Clapton is older than me, probably by about 10 years. But regardless, he listened to those guys. In fact, he covered a bunch of Freddie King songs on his first album, which was called The Blues Breakers. So wow. I figured, you know, good, good people to learn from. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and what I like is like they'll do like minor blues and just really emotional stuff. And I think I want to do a little emotional, minory blues in the key of C, because that's a good blues key. Yeah. C. So um, well, I'm a drummer, so I don't know much about. Ah, uh, it's all the know. same. It's just. Let's hear it. Anyway. Are we ready? I gotta hear this. He promised me to be the best, and he kept his promise. My mom has to get the last word. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to do the C minor blues, which I call Kentucky Women Blues. Ooh. Ooh. We got Kentucky Women in the house. I hope this is
Kentucky flavored blues. Yeah, that was some great <laughs> Kentucky blues. Yeah. yeah. Tremendous live right on the show. Never mind recording, do it live. Jack can do it live. I like to do it live. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun because also when you get to be my age, you know, your memory starts to go and everything. So you may as well just play live. Yeah. And yeah. you got to do two things when you get old. You have to stop lying because you can't remember the lies. <laughs> so you may as well just be totally honest. And also, yes. you've got to play live. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> You're right there. You can't remember. <laughs> All right, Jack. So we had the th we had the three minor blues. We had Santana, Gary Moore. Uh, Gary Moore, and um, basically, you know, I mean, the whole thing with blues for me. Now, there's a lot of guys, especially in, down here in, which Florida is like kind of like the South a little bit, right? Is, it, is Florida the South? Oh yeah. Could we say we're the South yeah. here? Yeah, definitely. The Almond Brothers were like a huge influence out here. But where I'm from, which is really New York, Long Island, and everything, the Almond Brothers weren't really like a big influence. It was, it was British blues. Right. It was uh, Clapton. It was uh, people like Savoy Brown. I don't know if you remember them. Oh, yeah. All. And uh, so, like, I'm more like a, even though I'm not really American and I'm not British because I was born in France, I'm still more of a British blues guy than than a Southern blues guy. Okay. Uh huh. So that's. I understand that. So that kind of like makes me sound a little bit different than a lot of people out here who are more into like the Almond Brothers, which I I like also. Right. I just it, didn't grow up with that. No, I didn't either because I'm from up north too, and, and I just grew up listening to like Eric Clapton. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. As opposed to, which I like too, you know. Yeah, it's all it, good. it was different. And then I listened to like this stuff. <laughs> which I like too, you know, like that kind of Johnny Hooker, which George Thorogood, you know, started playing and Muddy Waters and all that stuff. You know? mm -hmm. It's all, it's all good. Well, the Northeast is a lot different than down here. B back then, it was it's totally different. But my favorite, really, uh, that blend rock and blues would be ZZ Top. I mean, yeah. I just I love those guys. Uh, yeah, they, that's and, uh, they've got a good combination. Reverend yeah, Reverend Billy. Yes. I, I, and, uh, <laughs> you know everything they've done is cool. I did I did something kind of cool. Like they have a song called uh, "Just Got Paid," which goes like this. <laughs> So what I did, and a lot of songwriters will do this, you take a song and, and you kind of dissect it. And what I did is I, I played it backwards and I tapped it and I came up with this. <laughs> and, and, and what's cool is like, is cool. a lot of songwriters do that. They'll hear like a really cool riff. And they'll go, well, what would happen if I played it backwards or if I played it starting the end, put the end at the beginning? And uh, it's, it's an interesting thing to do. Like when they asked Jimmy Page, you know, are you guys a blues band or they were a, when they first came to America? And Jimmy Page said, no, we don't play blues. We mm -mm with the blues. I can't say the word on, on Internet. We, we mess with the blues. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really cool answer because it's like nothing is sacred, you know. I mean, just because some guy played a blues song 100 years ago doesn't mean in 2013 we have to play it like, like that person that right. played it. And I think when Zeppelin came out in 69, they showed that. It was like, um, we're going to do blues our way. So, so it became very, very uh, different. And I loved it. When it, you know, when when they were going like, uh, you know you should be there. You should be You know, prior to that, people were like, you know, going, you know, real mellow. You know, you know you should. <laughs> you know, and here they are. You know you should. 
And then, you know, Robert Plant would sound like he was singing, like, in the middle of a mountainside, you know, you know way down, you know, and it was, to me, it was really cool when I first heard that stuff. Yeah, that, that was, uh, that's a lot, lot, lot different than, what we heard a lot of that up there. Like you said, I, yeah. I don't know what they were hearing down here. I, well, I wasn't here. Well, I think, you know, country is a big influence down here. You know, country music is huge, and, uh. The Allman Brothers. <laughs> you know, I'm getting kind of different uh, ideas, not ideas, but views of the music down here. Since I've been down here, it's, it's everything. It's everything, yeah. I'll tell you, it's funny. Okay, I went on Facebook today, and uh, there, there's a good friend of ours named Scott Boggs. Oh, I know Scott. He, he, he posted something on Facebook. It was uh, Dave Feaster. No, oh, it, was, okay. it was Dave Feaster okay, on okay. American Bandstand. So I had to watch that. It was like such a cool clip. Now, here's Dick Clark asking all the members of the band, who are your influences? Four out of the five guys said Allman Brothers. The drummer didn't. The drummer said he liked R&B. But it was like, whoa, four out of five. So you know that that's a huge influence down here. Right. Yeah, I, I would and, imagine being and, Georgia's, right. Mississippi, Alabama, right. you know, Louisiana. I would have said, like, you know, Johnny Winters, Easy Top, Eric Clapton, Queen, Black Sabbath, uh, Led Zeppelin. See, that's a whole different geographical uh, uh, difference between there and here. Absolutely. Like, when I, when I was growing up, like, I just, I learned how to play listening to the first Johnny Winter album. It was that, Jeff Beck's Truth album, mm -hmm. which I have no every riff on that album, and the Progressive Blues Experiment. So I got to play one riff. Can I, can I do one riff? Oh, you can do Here. all you want. Okay, here's a little Johnny Winter riff. Johnny Winter. Johnny. Get, 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 get. <laughs> Johnny Winter, ZZ Top, all those people. I think the difference, well, for me, between them and like the Allman Brothers and Marshall Tucker and all the bands that are really were big influence down here, is they were mellow. I mean, they were mellower than uh, ZZ Top. I mean, they were like really aggressive. I mean, that's aggressive stuff to hear. And the thing that ZZ did, uh, that Billy did on the guitar, is he'd use pinch harmonics. Nowhere on any Allman Brothers record will you ever hear pinch harmonics. This is pinched harmonics. <laughs> That's a pinched harmonic. This is a regular note. Pinched. So, okay. So the pinched harmonic thing is very, very aggressive. And it's easy top. I mean, they throw that in all the time. <laughs> so me, when I was starting to play, I was more attracted to the aggressive players. But it didn't mean that it was metal. It just meant that it was blues, but blues played with an edge. With an edge, right. <clears throat> and I still do that. And it's like 40 years later. Fan it's a fancy type of blues, but you're right. Not a fancy, but a, it's I think it's just a more aggressive blues. It's it's, it's a more low word, down yeah, kind of. Probably the best word. Yeah, yeah, it's more aggressive, um, but but it's all good. I mean, I mean, I love the Allman Brothers too. But the weird thing is, I came to like them later on in life. Yeah, I did too. So <laughs> we're, yeah, we're on the same too. page. I, I I tell you, I didn't pay much attention to them 
when they for quite a while actually. Right, and then and then you realize, yeah, well, those guys are great, and they are. They're like fantastic musicians. Dicky Betts, and he doesn't, you know, like Dicky does all this uh, like southern picking, you know, like he'll he'll go like. Oh. You know, he does all that stuff. It's all that kind of chromatic, like those scales that go up and down and stuff. Yeah. Which I like too, you know, like. And all that stuff. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's <laughs> all, like it. it's I all like good. That. It's all good. Yeah. So let's see. I said I wasn't going to talk about myself. I did say that at the beginning of the show that I didn't want to plug anything. I have a million albums out, but I'm not going to plug any of them. Um. You know why? Because I think plugging something sometimes is cool, but the best thing to do is people can just Google Google you, and if they hear something they like, then they can track it down. It's an easy name, Jack Star. It's pretty easy, and it's my real name, mm -hmm. which it's hard for a lot of people to believe. <laughs> being, <you know>? Really? <laughs> but it's my real name, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so they can just Google me. And um, there's a bunch of websites, and there's a oh, lot there's of, a bunch of stuff. Uh, a bunch a lot of videos. There's uh, I myself posted about a hundred, but there's probably a couple of thousand videos b that other people have posted. You know, so there's all kinds of stuff out there, and they could just check out, and some of them they might like, like the song I played last night. <laughs> I played that last night at a club called Winfields. Oh, right. yeah, okay. Yeah, and I, this is like an open jam kind of thing. Oh, that's right, Austin. It was an open jam, yep. Austin Pettit there? I think, it, yeah, Austin Pettit, yeah. Mm. And it was cool, but, you know, I just, uh, I love playing, you know. And I also did a country a country album with, uh, I think you know who I'm talking about, Terry Cunningham. Yeah. It was called South of Georgia. Now, they, oh, they came wow. up with South of Georgia because... Florida is south of Georgia. Right. T.C. Ridge. 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 And we were all from Florida. So, so he came up with that. And uh, I came up with a, with a bunch of cool, like, country-sounding kind of riffs. Like, one of them, uh, this one's called Swimming in Dirty Water. That was like one of the South of Georgia songs. Yeah, I didn't know that you, uh, you did some work with them. Yeah, actually, we started that band, me, TC, and my bass player in my metal band, who's also a pretty versatile guy, Ned mm -hmm. Maloney. Uh, he likes all kinds of music. Um, well, even Todd got in on that. Too. Yeah, Todd Taylor. Todd Taylor, yeah. Todd yeah. Taylor played banjo on it. And, uh, and uh, as you know, Todd is in the Guinness Book of Records. Right. The fastest he, was, he came down to be on the show. The fastest banjo player in the world. The, the guy put, plugs the show on Fox and does it on a few other things. The next thing I know, <laughs> we're at 500,000 viewers. Yeah, Todd is... A, I couldn't believe it. I said, what the heck is that about? God bless you all for watching Todd Taylor in the show. Todd's a good guy, and, um, you know, what can you say about it? That's, that's a good band. And uh, Todd gave me an idea, too, like when I was hanging out with him when he used to live out in Palm Bay. Yeah, he was right. He was down here. He, you know, he wanted to be the fastest banjo player. So I said, well, well damn it, I'll be the fastest guitar player. <laughs> so I actually put a video on YouTube, which has about 100,000 views. It's the world's fastest guitar player. And then I have another video called... Um, I believe that. I bet you... Yeah, yeah it's, it's... Well, you can all check it out. And then I did one uh, blues, world's best blues solo, which, you know, obviously I don't really believe that. But you, you kind of make these names up because you want to get tons of views. And that's got <laughs> about 100,000 views as well. <laughs> And the very first album that I did with the, my metal band called Virgin Steel, right. it's, a, it's this beautiful love song called Still in Love with You. 
which I hope people will check out on I the I think internet. you just had that on Facebook the other day. I just I put it on it Facebook. I saw it. That's got 98,000 something views, so I think that's going to go to 100 probably in the next month or so. I wouldn't doubt it. It's beautiful. Thank you. But what's really cool about stuff like that for me is that, I mean, I'm doing a, a metal thing, a blues thing, and I'm doing my band thing, and and it's just it's just cool not to not to let yourself be just into one genre right. of music, you know. Right. No, so. you you're, you're really. You're I just I just like it all, you know. I just really. <laughs> well, you really seem to be enjoying yourself. I am. I really I really love uh, playing music, and we're gonna make another album, and. Uh, it's oh, that's good, Jack. That's I gotta give great. you a preview of the album. This is gonna be on it. That's one of the songs that's going to be on it. There's going to be another song that's going to go like this. So that's going to be like one of the songs that, you know. going to be one of the songs. Um, Again, you got, this isn't your next project. Yeah. It, the next album is uh, it's kind of weird because it's called Stand Your Ground. Now, when we came up with that title about a year and a half ago, I didn't know that there's actually a law in Florida called the Stand Your Ground Law. Yeah, with the trial thing going on right now. Tonight. But there's an, an actual law, and we didn't know that, and uh, so it's kind of topical. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the album is really just about um, not... You know, just not letting yourself get pushed around because there's a lot of people in our society which is becoming more and more uh, totalitarian that really are trying to take our rights away and uh, you know we're from the generation that believed in freedom and liberty and our constitution uh, so oh, yeah. so you know it, it's not something that we want to see happen you know we're not going to let it happen uh, and it seems like it's really headed in that direction, though. It's, it is. I mean, and, it's, and it's really sad because... Trying to shove it down our throats. Yeah, because America really was founded on, uh, you know, personal liberty and, uh, you know, our freedoms that are guaranteed in the Constitution. And, uh, and I'm definitely in favor of that, and I really can't think of anybody that would be against that. Right. You know? Right. Unless, unless their name was Don Corleone, and they played this... But anyway, I, I'm from New York, so we, we know a lot of Corleones up there. My mother's maiden name was Corleone. No, that stop it. Was strange. it? Was Boy, that's, that's, was it really? that's scary. Oh, man, you must have took some uh, abuse. <laughs> hey, uh, anyways, that, that's really good. Uh, we're going we're gonna to probably head out of the show now, unfortunately. Should I play some more guitar? Yeah, maybe we can Can you twist have, my arm, Will? Please do. I don't. I, Should I, I play more guitar? Yeah, audience. let's hear it. Come on. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I should go out with the C minor stuff. Can we do more of that C minor C uh, Kentucky Women Blues? Oh yeah, that because be we have a a big crowd of Kentucky <laughs> women here tonight. Yeah. Ladies, in their bikinis, they just came off the beach. Uh, <laughs> Well, now we're projecting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're projecting. Steve, not, not to get off the subject, Steve Murray's always doing that on the show. We got a big bunch of women here today, and it makes the women sound clapping, and, and they just came off the beach, and they're in the bikinis. Hey, look at that pretty one right up. The first one. Okay. I don't we know what the first one is. We'll find out what it is. <laughs>
number 38. Second time on the show. Tremendous guy. Nine months ago he was on. Now he's on again tonight. Got to watch the show. We'll be up and running in about another hour and a half. You'll be able to see it free again if you didn't catch it live. ISWTVstudio.com. Mr. Jack Starr. What a privilege and an honor to have him here tonight. Rolling away on this guitar. Tremendous. We're lucky to have him here. Don't, don't miss the show. Thank you all for watching the show. We'll be back next week. All right. God bless. Thank you. Jack Starr. Watch the show. It'll be up. A-